A decade ago, a sister came in my office, and she asked me a question. She says, Imam, do I have the right to be happy? She was telling me about the difficulty in her life. And now, over a decade later, I'd like to answer her. Do I have the right to be happy? All of the speakers tonight have said the same thing. I like to just give a little more. I want to go back to the beginning. I want to go back to your creation and yours and yours and yours and mine and yours. When we were in the wombs of our mother, Allah sent an angel and told the angel to write four things. The Adba'a Kalimat, the sustenance, the jobs that we have, the money that we make, the houses that we have. It was written then, not yesterday, not when you graduated from school, not when you first got that job, but it was written right there in the wombs of your mother, in the work that we would do. And how long we would live. And then Allah told the angel to write this word or that word, Sa'idun Shaqiyun. Either we will be happy or miserable. And all that we do must come down to this issue, nothing else. I don't care how much money you have, how happy you think you are on this earth now, but the reality is it all boils down to this. You're going to be shaqiyun, you're going to be miserable, or you're going to be sa'id, you're going to be happy. I want to quote a verse from the Qur'an that sheds light on this world right now. We must begin in Jannah. We must. And Allah will never change the condition of a people until they first change what is within themselves. We must begin right. We must begin in Jannah. We must begin in Fitrah. Always we must begin right. And somewhere along the line, we change because we disobey Allah. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم فقلنا يا عدم إن هذا عدو لك all said the same thing ولزوجك and listen to the next word and Allah His wisdom is so perfect فلا يخرجنكما من الجنة this shaitan is your enemy for you and your wife. So don't let him kick you out of the Jannah because when he does that, you're going to be miserable. And then he says, Inna laka Allah tajua fiha wa la ta'ara. In it, you will have. No hunger or nakedness. Let's stop there. 
Let's stop there. I'm going to ask you a question. Do we have hunger in the world? Millions of people die every day because they can't even find bread and water to drink, bread to eat and water. Millions of people a day, every day on this earth. Why? Because that is the nature of this world right now, the nature of the dunya right now. Nakedness. In this gender, you're already there. You have what you want. You can drink water. You can drink food, everything. You're not going to be naked. You're going to have gold and silver. But in this world, do we have people thirsty? All the time. You know why? That's the nature of this world. Do I have a right to be? Do I have the right to be happy? 232 years ago, the author of the Declaration of Independence said this. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And he didn't name happiness. You know why? Because you can't do it. One man said, in fact, it was a woman named Mary, no man chooses evil because it is evil. He only mistakes it for happiness. William Hazlitt said, how little security have we when we trust our happiness in the hands of others. And finally, Eric Hoffer said, the search for happiness is one of the chief sources of unhappiness. Running after something, thinking that you're going to get happiness because you get something in your hand, you will never get happiness. My thesis tonight is that the only real happiness is the happiness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I want to take a moment to look at our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How can you find true happiness in this dunya when those whom you love will depart? Abdul Rahman ibn Auf asked Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him, a question. And I would like to ask the same question tonight that he asked. His son, Ibrahim, an, was at the point of death. And I want you to imagine holding your little baby. And the prophet began to cry. Abdul Rahman ibn Al said, Wa anta, Ya Rasulullah, you too? You crying? Our Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, Hiya rahmah is mercy. And then he said, The eyes may cry and the heart may feel sad, but we never say except that which pleases our Lord. Brothers and sisters, you know what? The only glimpse of happiness in this world. Uh, Sheikh Khadri, uh, we were together a few months ago, and I mentioned about my daughter, Subhana, that she was getting married. Allah bless her, she got married two weeks ago. It's a man named Lukman, and right now they're in Egypt on their honeymoon. You know what a honeymoon is? 
And you know why they call it honeymoon? It's from the French. Moon means month. And the French say that when you get married, the sweetest time is the first month. glimpses of happiness. How often we've been on honeymoons and the great love between the husband and the wife. How can you be happy when somebody been married 30 years and all of a sudden one day the husband say, I don't want to be married to you anymore. Or the wife says, I want to get a divorce. I'm, I'm not happy. How often how often do we have people come visit Master Atakwa one block south of our Master, a homeless shelter, 1,000 homeless men? How could you find happiness here when those whom you love have been married for years and then someone dies? How can you get happy? How can you be happy when our senior citizens who have been retired for years have to go back to work because of the economy right now. How are you going to be happy? We had a janazah this morning. One of our brothers, his baby died a few days ago. How could you have happiness here? Alzheimer's disease and sicknesses and all of that. Millions of people visiting the emergency rooms and, and hospitals. Uh, emergency rooms in the hospitals every day. How can you be happy here? So brothers and sisters, I leave you with this thought. I want to mention a, a woman that probably you never heard of before. Because I want us to walk out of here this conference with something that's going to affect us so that we have the right attitude. January 26, 1972, there was an airline 33,000 feet in the sky that was blown up by a bomb. Everyone on the plane died except one woman. Her name, Vesna Vulovic. 33,000 feet in the sky. Let me give you some perspective. Remember the World Trade Center? And you remember people jumping off of the, of the building and dying? The distance, 1,368 feet. Tell me how a bomb explodes 33,000 feet in the sky and the plane blows up and a woman 22 years old survives because she wasn't part of the plane and the plane when it hit the mountain it hit some snow and she's alive and she's alive today to talk about it. And you know what they say? She cheated death. Wrong words. It was because Allah wrote, Mekeli Ninesan Ente Muta Ilabi Ifnila Kitabin Mu Ejjala. No soul can die except by the permission of Allah. It is already written in a book. It was written before we were born. So if a Muslim knows that nobody can die except by the permission of Allah, when your daughter dies, when your son dies, when your wife dies, when your husband dies, when your grandmother dies, when your best friend dies, when your imam dies, when the scholar dies, you say, it is the will of Allah. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi wa It is. It is the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And once we understand that, 
Now we can accept death. We can accept death whenever it comes. I read the Quran, I read Sunnah. I have never found anywhere that suggests that Allah will guarantee us happiness in this world. When you look at our Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him, his father died before he was born. His mother died when he was six years old. His grandfather, Abdul Muttalib, took over. He died. His uncle, Abu Talib, he died. His wife, Khadija, she died. Daughters of the Prophet, they died. Now what are we going to do when we have some misfortune in this life? Are we going to leave the, the Islam? Are we going to believe in the morning and disbelieve in the night? Are we going to believe at night and disbelieve in the morning? No. The reality is what the Prophet said in my conclusion. Allahumma la aisha illa aishul akhirah. Oh Allah, there is no life except the life of the hereafter. Brothers and sisters, our key is how we view this life. For me, in us, according to one scholar, Sheikh Jamal, I was reading your book, and you mentioned in this hadith that one scholar, he wrote that when Allah told the angel to write Sa'id or Shaqi, all it was one word, either one or the other. Now, brothers and sisters, we should want to know, insha'Allah, that Yom al Qiyamah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will enter us into our Jannah. And by the way, by the way, uh, there was a survey taken uh, by some social scientists, and they asked the question which country is the happiest country? Who do you think they put number one? Denmark. How did they know that? And what was the last one? Least happy? Zimbabwe. And which is the richest nation on the earth? United States. And what place were they in? Sixteen. Subhanallah. So, Allah. so brothers and sisters, I, I conclude with this issue. Sometimes it is not our condition, but how we view our condition. Sometimes it looks very difficult for us and very dark for us until we translate, understand, and interpret. I conclude with this. Our Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salat was salam left his wife, Hagar, and his son in the desert. And he went away. And as he was walking away, Hagar asked, Ya yeah, Ibrahim, where are you going? Where are you going? Are you going to leave us in this valley? He keeps on walking. And then she asks the question, Have you been ordered by Allah to do this? He said, yes. And so she said, Allah will not desert us. And then a son grows up. He gets married. His father's not there. One day he goes away to work. Ibrahim alayhi salat wa salam comes to visit. He asks a few questions. How was your condition? She goes on to complain that it's very bad, it's very miserable. Prophet Abraham said that when your husband comes, give him the salams and tell him to change the threshold of his gate. He goes away, Ishmael comes, he feels something. Did you get a visit? Yes, a man came. And he told me to say to you, Assalamu alaikum, and change the threshold of his gate. He said, woman, that was my father. And you are the threshold of my gate. And he told me to divorce you. Go home. And then he married another woman. Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salat wa salam came to visit her when her husband Ishmael was gone. 
How is your condition? Bi khair. Alhamdulillah. It's good. Abraham alayhi salat wa salam said, Give your husband salams and tell him to keep strong the threshold of his gate. And when Ishmael came home, she said to him that your, this man had come to see you. And he said, give you salams and say, keep firm the threshold of your gate. He said, you are the threshold of my gate. And that was my father. And he said that I should remain married to you. Two women, same condition, different outlook. Our condition here in this country is great when we serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when we serve Allah, no matter what happens to us, Allahu Akbar. Because we want to be Saeed on Yom al Qiyamah and we want to go to Jannah. May Allah bless you, brothers and sisters, and bless this conference that we will take from it and take it into our lives.